morning good afternoon good evening depending on your time zone so we wanted to do this webinar since a lot of you have questions on the season uh, it's about uh, 15 days two weeks after the applications have been submitted and the questions are am i not getting interviews what's wrong is it uh, late should i start on a backup plan how can i contact the program directors program coordinators what kind of outreach can I do? And uh, then, of course, uh, you know, how do I prepare for interviews? What should I do next? So those are the kind of questions I did want to uh, tackle in this uh, webinar. So as you are getting settled, I will, uh, you know, ask uh, some of you in terms of uh, where you are in the application season. Did you apply? How many interviews? And, and that will give us some more perspective on how to, uh, you know, approach uh, today's uh, webinar. So uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, now let's get started. I think I do have a presentation that will make it easier as we uh, get to uh, the, uh, the presentation. I will take questions. Uh, but I'll do it at the at the end or or during the during the presentation. Yeah. So let me share my screen if I can. Uh, so we are. Let me just start with a poll. Meanwhile, you know, I want to see uh, where you are with the uh, interview preparation, match season, etc. So. Uh, if you could answer the question as it is showing up, so that will give me a better sense of the audience. So how many have applied, how many interviews we are talking about, uh, those kind of things, you know. So let's give it a minute. Meanwhile, it will also help. Uh, so where are you guys physically located? If you can put in the chat, are you in US, outside US? Uh, you know, how do you plan your interviews? Uh, virtually, of course, most of the you, I guess, but uh, inside US, outside US, if you want to share. Uh, okay, so mostly US, uh, some in India, Pakistan, uh, US, good. Cairo, okay. Uh, Jamaica, all right. Canada, Nepal. So pretty much all over, which is a good thing. I mean, you know, given these virtual interviews, uh, the good thing is uh, you can take it from anywhere. So uh, as you guys answered uh, this question, good to know that a lot of you have applied this season, so about 96%. And uh, now about 50% of you are still waiting. Uh, many of you have uh, at least started receiving interviews between one and five, but there are uh, several of you who have received more than five interviews. So congratulations uh, uh, to those of you who have received interviews. And for others, of course, don't lose hope. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll get to it and what you can do. Okay, so with that out of the way, I did want to, uh, you know, share some thoughts with you guys. Uh, so let me uh, share this presentation. Hopefully, you can all see this. Uh, so that's the uh, agenda for today. Uh, so first, uh, what is the invite timeline? Many of you have questions. Is it late? Is it early? Should I be worried, etc.? So we'll go over that. Uh, then a quick kind of a summary on how uh, programs evaluate IMGs. Now, of course, each program is different, uh, but as you may be aware, NRMP does these surveys. So 
uh, you get to see program directors perspective as well so and i do talk with a lot of program directors so uh, to get some feedback on how they are evaluating the applicant because things change from season to season as well then we'll talk about how to follow up with the programs and how can you secure more interviews uh, given that it's already uh, middle of october then for those of you who are uh, already having interviews, what can you do uh, to prepare for these interviews? And then other questions and, and tips that you uh, may want to hear about uh, the season. So a typical timeline, and um, this is not changed uh, after COVID. I'll tell you where the changes are. So the first wave is now well and truly underway. Uh, Sarthi students, for example, have received as of uh, yesterday evening, more than 250 interview invites across specialties, uh, IM, FM pathology, site, OBGYN, uh, all of them have sent out invites. Uh, so, you know, the typical neuro has been there. So the typical um, uh, in, uh, IMG specialties have started. Uh, but this is just a start. This is the first wave. It will continue in October and probably uh, towards mid of November around Thanksgiving. Then generally there is a break. Uh, and uh, in December, you will see interview invites probably into January. Also January will tend to be newer programs. So December and Jan. Now, the change is mostly the third wave. So what used to happen is in the pre-COVID era when there were on-site interviews, uh, a lot of uh, students would cancel the interviews after December. Reason being, you know, they had to travel. So there is a cost associated with it more than 10, you know, then the cost, if you have more than 10 interviews, the cost adds up. Uh, there could be weather related issues. There obviously is physical and mental tiredness that creeps in. So more than 10 people would want to cancel. Uh, but now post COVID, uh, as we all know, most interviews are virtual. So the travel cost is zero. Uh, and you know there is no weather related cancellation. So the number of interviews that IMGs cancel and even AMGs has come down quite a bit. So January and, and Feb, the next month, uh, generally uh, the invites have slowed down. So third wave has really gone down post COVID. Now there are new programs, new programs uh, that will always come up and they may send out invite, but uh, third wave in general has slowed down. Like I said, people cancel once they have a pre-match interview and all that, but even otherwise, if you have a 25 plus interviews, people are not canceling. So that's one thing to be aware of. The second thing to be aware of is how they hand out the interview. So recent graduates typically will get earlier interviews. High scorers will get early interview invites. Um, if you don't need visa, so if you have green card or citizenship, you will get early interview invites. And then it is by specialty also. Some specialties like IM, FM, like I mentioned, they've already sent out or starting to send out invites. Sometimes university programs take time. Uh, so you will not have seen much of university programs sending out invites. Some specialties uh, may also need more time. So radiology has started, but generally uh, they are a bit uh, late. Uh, programs take time to, uh, to assess. Uh, so, so it is specialty, it is, you know, your profile, uh, it is also university versus community. So a lot of things get in the mix as you see about the interview uh, timeline. So the point here is a couple of things. It is not late, right? Um, season has started well and truly. Yes, two weeks in, like I said, enough interviews have gone out, but it is not too late. Uh, you can get interviews, you will get interviews in, in November, uh, December kind of a thing. And then the other thing is whether you get an interview early or late, uh, there is no statistical evidence that your match chances are higher or lower. That also goes with when you interview, unless you're interviewing in a pre-match program. So 
uh, receiving the interviews now versus December should not impact your math chances. That's one. And uh, the, the other thing, obviously everyone will get rejections. Rejections are part and parcel of this process. If you apply to 200 programs, you absolutely will get about 150 rejections. Um, we do have students who have received more than 50 interviews last season. Uh, every season there are students who will receive more than 20 plus anyway. Uh, but even they will receive 100 plus rejections. So rejections are a part of uh, this process. Uh, then a lot of people, uh, you know, will tell you, which is true, that you only need one interview to match. Many of my students have matched with one interviews every season, but that does not mean that uh, you should not try to secure more interviews. You absolutely have to secure more interviews and you should be preparing for those. Now, the next slide which I'm showing here is from the NRMP surveys. And uh, now the NRMP surveys, as you probably know, is held for the program directors and program directors get to rank these. Uh, of course, uh, for IMGs, uh, there are some unique aspects which are not there for I American graduates. But in general, what is happening is if you have a score in step one, the program directors still like to look at the score. And yes, it is pass fail, but a score is still, uh, your score is still reported and uh, program directors do take into account. So a 260 is still a very high score. Uh, 210 in step one is the lower score depending on the specialty. So score does matter. CK score uh, is going to be uh, more and more important, uh, as, as you can see, as we are moving towards step one pass fail. So that's that's important aspect. Uh, if you have attempts, then yes, it is a red flag. Program directors do consider attempts to be a red flag. Commitment to specialty, I think, is a very important thing. So we've listed these important things, you know, what type of rotations you have done, what type of research you have done, uh, if you have relevant home country experiences, all that matters. Um, LORs, yes, absolutely. US LORs, uh, you know, three to four months of USCE, uh, waived LORs, they really matter. And, and then, comes into the uh, specific application aspects that the uh, personal statement, for example, uh, you know, how you tell your story is important. Of course, all this is now done and gone, but how you tell your story is very important. And finally, if as an IMG or even as an American graduate, if you've overcome significant challenges, right, that is uh, starting to play out now. This is not the, the first year um, they're doing it. Uh, the In the previous seasons, last two seasons, they had the supplemental ERAS application. Now the ERAS, the supplemental ERAS application has been folded into the main ERAS CV. So therefore, they are asking those impactful experiences, meaningful experiences. And if you have those, uh, they play a role as well. Uh, but important aspect here to see is exam scores do matter uh, as they invite you for an interview. Commitment to specialty is absolutely important. Now, what this does not show um, and is important for program directors, specifically for IMGs, is research. So research experience is starting to uh, get very important. They do want to see how much research you have, whether it's case reports, manuscripts, how, how have you done it in past? So that's one. And uh, the second is step three, depending on, again, your exam score, step one, CK, year of graduation, et cetera, uh, they would want to see regardless of the specialty, uh, step three. But of course, uh, it depends on the profile. So step three may not be needed for everyone. Uh, the other thing for IMGs not listed in the survey is the year of graduation. Year of graduation can be an important criteria, although it's uh, not a very hard filter. So it's a soft filter, 
but it is important. Now, the next thing, uh, you know, how do you follow up uh, with the program directors? How do you secure more interviews? So the first thing is obviously uh, a lot of you may have heard about letter of interest. We have a video. So uh, check out our uh, YouTube uh, channel and also our website. We have a lot of blogs on, on these things. So letter of interest uh, is important. It communicates to the program uh, your interest and fit to not only the specialty, but also to the program. So the letter of interest, more specific, more personalized, really helps you. It really, mm -hmm. uh, if you're putting out a generic letter of interest, that may not help. And, um, you know, following up with the programs can be through multiple channels. The, the uh, open office hours that they have, you know, uh, LinkedIn is a good way to connect if you could connect with the residents. So anything and everything, uh, virtual uh, hours that they hold nowadays to talk about their program, all these things are a good thing. And uh, this kind of connection, this kind of communication with the programs should continue till at least in January. So that's one thing. The second and the related thing is, you know, if you can communicate your changes uh, in your CV uh, to the to the programs, whether it is more rotations, whether it's research, whether it's step three, uh, obviously you cannot now update your EDA CV, but uh, this is one way to stay connected to the programs. If you can let them know, uh, that uh, obviously helps. And we have uh, detailed classes as Many of you who are Sarthi students have access on the letter of interest, how to reach out, when to reach out, all those kind of things are important. And letter of interest or program outreach and networking is important. It really, really helps you get those additional four or five interviews, regardless of the profile. So uh, this time of the season, you should be looking to uh, reach out to the programs. It is not too late, regardless of your profile, uh, start it. And, but again, don't panic. It is uh, not over yet. The season will end only end of January. A lot of people have this confusion uh, that after applications uh, and in the first two weeks, if I didn't get the interview, it's over. I don't think that is the case. So, <clears throat> You know, then for those of you who have the interviews and even those who do not have the interviews, the uh, important thing to keep in mind here is that interview preparation is just like an exam. Uh, some of us may be gifted and you may not need to prepare that much and, and you may already be in the US system. So you know how to tackle the interviews. But for a lot of us, uh, interviewing is an exam it's a skill that you have to acquire. So you have to really start early uh, and of course practice. Now, the reason for starting early is the following. Sometimes a program, let's say, uh, is interviewing this coming Wednesday or Friday, let's say, and suddenly something happens and a spot opens up, maybe the student canceled or something happened. The program could reach out to you on a Monday and say, uh, thank you for your interest. Here is, we have a spot on Friday. Are you interested in interviewing? So what do you do at that point? At that point, your option is either to say, no, I'm not ready or give me another day or you just go and interview. Now, the challenge is sometimes you may not have the option of selecting a date. Sometimes they'll put you on wait list. So the sooner you are ready, the better it is. That's why regardless of the number of interviews you have, regardless of whether you have interviews in January, for example, you may already have scheduled it, do not put off the preparation. Preparation is the key at this point. Once you get the interview, preparation is the most important thing. So preparing early will really, really benefit you because that means you are prepared to take an interview the next day, a week from now, and things like that, of course. So it takes time, so prepare early. Then 
And the second is practice. So practice, like they say, makes perfect. You can practice with other Sarthi students. So we have a student group where we practice. You can practice uh, with whosoever you want, but practice of the questions is the key. So we have about 70 to 80 questions. These questions are not important. They are all over the web. You can see these from anywhere. It's the how you personalize your response, how you bring out the examples and how you uh, you know, end the question, for example, those are the techniques you need to learn because generic responses from chat GPT or Google uh, do not cut it. You have to remember that for each spot, so let's say it's internal medicine 20 spot program, they will get about 2000 applications and they'll probably select between 200 to 300 applicants to interview. Uh, now, how do you stand and differentiate yourself from other applicants is the key. And that's why the practice of your interview questions is important. How do you customize? How do you, uh, you know, manage the flow of the interview? How do you convert the interview in a conversation is very important. Uh, a lot of students will feel that it is up to the interviewer to ask question and you reply. So Q&A kind of a format, which is okay, but that is not the best format. For your benefit, you have to be able to convert that interview into a conversation. Once you're able to convert the interview into a conversation, that's where uh, it helps you in uh, you know, getting ranked higher in that program. And then, of course, the third thing here, which I want to absolutely mention, uh, again, there are many videos on this, blogs on our website, is in this day and age of virtual interviews, it is very important for you to have absolutely uh, you know, flawless audio and video. So goes without saying, high-speed internet connection, a uh, laptop or a Mac, uh, external mic if you need it, uh, external camera if you need it, all of that. And we've answered this in our classes as well as some blogs. So those things are important. Do not take interviews on a phone. That is the worst way to do it. Uh, how do you maintain an eye contact? How you demonstrate confidence, your body language, even in the virtual world matters. Remember, that virtual interviews are different from on-site interviews in a very critical way, which is if you are on-site, uh, the dynamics are different. They can see you uh, physically. Uh, you know, you, they, they'll have a morning, uh, maybe a morning round. They'll take you to morning round, give you a tour of the campus. So they have a lot more opportunity, a lot more time to get to know you. In a virtual world, in a virtual interview, 15 minutes each, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and then maybe some, some virtual talks from the program director and all. So it's not that easy to connect. Uh, so you have to really do your best when it comes to preparing for uh, you know, these logistics, background, lighting, et cetera, for the interviews. So to summarize, uh, start early. If you need help, uh, check out our uh, interview preparation courses. Very exhaustive and comprehensive. We have medical questions, behavioral questions. Uh, I personally do uh, 12 classes. Uh, there are other, all everything you need for interview, including mock interviews is there. Uh, and then practice. So we do have a separate group where uh, Sarthi students practice among themselves, so you can you can do that. And finally, be ready for the virtual interviews in terms of your uh, setup. So other important tips, uh, like I mentioned, interview is the most important thing, number one. Number two, don't uh, panic yet. Uh, the season has started, but at this point, you should be looking to reach out to the programs, you know, trying to do this outreach. Third important tip is don't think that uh, Iras CV is gone, so nothing else matters. 
all your rotations, all your research, whatever you do from now till January will matter. Interviews will come. It just depends on your profile, whether you get it now or in November. Uh, new programs will show up. So you will have the opportunity to apply to the new programs, whether they show up in, uh, in January or December, uh, you know, who knows, but uh, new programs are going to be there. So there is a lot of time left in the season. The season by no means is over. Uh, you control the controllables, figure out what you need to work on, whether it's interview preparation, program outreach, step three, research, all of that. If you can start, the chances that you will have a good outcome uh, on the match day is very high. Uh, like they say, you need only one interview to match. Uh, be prepared and you will do well. So with that, <clears throat> you know, I wanted to just stop and uh, uh, take questions. I think that is more important. You have questions. So let me uh, now take questions. You can, uh, you know, put it in the chat or uh, you know ask in q and a and i'll i'll start reading so i'll uh, uh, repeat the question and then the answer so radhika is asking when should we start sending letter of interest how frequently should we send them so you can start now it's already i think uh, two weeks out so you should be sending personalized customized letter how frequently i think every three weeks you need to be able to connect with the programs at the minimum uh, there are other ways and means uh, to reach out, connect, and improve your chances and yield. And we have a lot of classes around that. Uh, what if the program doesn't recommend these kind of communication? Then unfortunately, don't do it. Uh, I mean, I think the answer is straightforward. If the program doesn't encourage, uh, you should not do it. Can we interview? Can we appear in the interview from our home country? Yes, you can. That is absolutely not a problem. Uh, will it make a difference if we are in US during the interviews? Uh, now, some programs have given you the option. Uh, do you want on-site? Do you want uh, remote? If you are in the US, I think you should pick on-site. Can we prepare for interviews simultaneously with preparation for step three? I think the answer is yes. Yes, you should and you can. Uh, does it make a difference if we do not have a step three score during the interview? I think it depends on your profile. Uh, if you are someone with low scores attempts, uh, I think step three is important. So try to take it. So I recently received an email from Iraq that ECFMG certificate for all IMGs war was inadvertently released as expired, which was later rectified. Does it have any impact? I don't think this will have an impact. It was a system error. You mentioned about new programs. Can you elaborate a bit? So new programs always show up. You can Google them and uh, they get uh, ACGME accreditation late in the season. So they will show up on iras and you can apply to them and interview with them uh a clip on the mic okay to use i think so yeah you can use it that's not a problem uh whom should we email the letter of interest the pd or the pc uh, pc is fine uh, you know program director sometimes do not have the time uh i cannot find pd's email address so uh, if there's not no way to find it, send it to the general email that they have on Frida or send it to the program coordinator. Uh, what else? Which specialty sent interview invites later? So most of the uh, AMG specialties uh, start a bit late because they are waiting for the AMG, MSPEs, and all that. So, but IM, FM, uh, psych, pathology, pediatrics, neurology, uh, they've all started uh, as per our data. When should we expect rejection emails to start coming? So now this is an important question. A lot of programs will just not send you rejection, you know, unfortunately. Uh, some of them will start now. Uh, but rejections is not a reflection of whether that program is considering you for the interview or not, because 
like I said, a lot of programs are not going to send you a rejection email. Uh, I'm an old 2008 YOG. I know I'll get interviews later from neurology. When should I be worried? So if uh, you know you have uh, a good experience and uh, you will start to get interviews, you think I think uh, you can start. So starting to worry if you have a good profile, which looks like you do in neurology. Uh, I think end of October you will should be worried if. Uh, you don't have neurology interviews. Of course, you also have to assess how many programs have uh, sent out the uh, invites. Okay. Let me see. Uh, I applied in time before September 27th, but my MSPE and LOR were not uploaded. I assigned around 30, around 30th September. Uh, is it a red flag? Uh, so not so much of the MSPE. I think till you assign the LORs, your application is deemed incomplete. Uh, so the best way to do it would be to, to reach out to the programs and tell them that uh, you applied your LORs late, so it should be fine. Uh, is it replying on the RAS2 program to so send us acknowledgement messages okay or email is better? So acknowledgement, if it's an automated email, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, whether you use ERAS or email, I don't think acknowledgement email is typically a system generated email that will receive your CV. Uh, should we visit the pre-match programs if you are in the same city our state, I'm sorry. And can we ask them about visiting the interview? Yeah, of course you can. And uh, many pre-match programs will be open to it. Uh, how much of a high score plays a role in internal medicine match? So scores are scores and high score is always better. I think it depends on your profile. So if you are say a recent 2022-23 graduate, visa seeking, I think 240, 245, CK, and step one is a good score. Uh, I, I think 220 is a low score in IM, both steps. How many programs should we send letter of interest to? I think it depends on you. Uh, you know, you can send it to all programs. Should I be sending customized LOI? Yes, you should be sending out customized LOI. Should I email the program beforehand to ask who are they going to interview? Who are, who in the program, I think you're asking should interview me. So if you already have uh, an invite, I, I think it's a good idea to reach out to the program coordinator to ask if, if they know the agenda yet in terms of who will be on your uh, panel. Uh, sometimes these things are decided quite late, so they may not know. Is virtual background accepted? I don't think you need it. I mean, but it depends on what the virtual background is. Um, I, I think if you want to blur the background, that's fine. Uh, or uh, if you are sitting in some kind of an office or a room uh, where I am, of course, I have my other virtual background. But uh, as long as it is professional white or, or light color in the background, that's fine. You don't need virtual backgrounds. But if you are our student, uh, watch the class. We have detailed it out. Uh, what about the programs I've signaled? Is it better to send letter of interest? Yeah, absolutely send it out. Uh, and you can also sing, uh, obviously send letter of interest to programs you have not signaled. So. Don't worry about it. When should I worry about not getting an interviews in IM since most programs have started sending out invite? Like I said, it depends on your profile. Uh, if you're a recent graduate with two 60s, you should have already gotten two, three interviews at least. Uh, if not, I mean, depending on the profile, uh, you know, you can you can do that. Uh, let's see, what questions? Uh, old graduate 2013, uh, MD pediatrics from India. Uh, apart from 
Step three, what would increase my chances of getting interviews? So uh, you have a home country residency in pediatrics, which is a good thing. Assuming you've applied to pediatrics, you have a very strong profile. Uh, so if you're working, continue to work. Step three is important, relevant research. Uh, if you can start all rotations, I think it's a good idea. At this point, you just have to reach out to the program and tell them what you are working on right now. Uh, 236 is a below average uh, a score for uh, IMGs. I don't need a visa. Is it possible to match in IM? Absolutely, it is possible, right? Score is an important criteria, but it is still one of the criteria. So, uh, you know, there are things you can do. Uh, I've had other uh, webinars on this. Uh, it's too late now. Uh, if you're starting to think, I think focus on the season uh, in terms of reach out and all that. And then, but yeah, 236 is very matchable. Telerotations ma matters or does not matter for matching. I, I think it still plays an important role. If you have done telerotations, don't hide it. If you were mentioned in your CV, tell them what you used it for. How was it useful for your learning? Uh, some programs are not scheduling interviews in Iraq. Yes, uh, they have asked you to call them and then they decide on the interview date. And, and so the only way to do it, yes, keep calling them. If you've set it up, then send reminders or something. This is unfortunate. Some programs uh, have not been able to do a simple thing as a scheduling system on the website. Uh, so, you know, call them, let them know, give it about a week and then ask again. So that's what you have to do. Is, is it important to send out thank you email after having in uh, interview invite? No, it's not important. I mean, you, you have the invite, but it is a general courtesy. So if you, you know, unless you have 25 interviews in the same kind of day you received, I, I think sending an email of thanking them is a good idea, but it's not required. Okay, so this is a good question. Does it mean the spots will be already filled for the programs which have already sent out invitations and we should not expect call from those? I didn't say that. Uh, programs send out invites in waves. So all programs have not sent out all the invite. It will come they are just trying to assess their own schedules and uh, you know who can interview how many and when so it doesn't mean that they will not send out more invites it's just started year of graduation 2012 home country residency in internal medicine but i did tell a rotation any chance of getting i am yeah i mean a lot of my students even last year matched with only tele-rotation experience. So you can absolutely match. I think interview preparation is something you need to focus on to be able to articulate uh, some of these challenges that you faced. How to send a follow-up email, new email, or connected to the earlier letter of interest. Uh, it, it depends if they've been uh, replying to your email thread, I think you can continue to use it or do something new. Mm -hmm. When should we be worried about or think about a backup plan in pathology? Um, again, depending on your profile, I think uh, you should not panic till end of October, early November. Uh, but after that, you know, reach out to the programs and, and see how other students are doing. Is it okay to contact a program about submission of an article in a journal. So that's a legitimate reach out to programs. You can do that. Yes, tell them uh, you can. Uh, is letter of interest similar to personal statement? I think we have a video, Shela from my team did it a couple of days ago. It is not the personal statement. It is, I don't think it is similar to the personal statement. So uh, watch that video on how that works. 
if not currently working uh, in any assistant job which was filled as till present ah i see so you had a job uh, which you left after september 27 mm -hmm. uh, and now you don't have the job so is it a common question to be asked in the interview yes you have to be ready to say what you are doing now and if you're not working and of course why and what the plan is step 2 is 218 home country i am residency two tele rotations visa requiring so ck is on the lower side uh, as as you can see 218 uh, you know do the outreach since you have not done any on site rotations uh, if you have uh you know interviews we can definitely help you in the match right so interview preparation we can definitely help uh but otherwise the ck is on the lower side uh what counts as a clinical experience after uh, you graduate so a job uh, obviously is a clinical experience usce is a clinical experience uh so those kind of things you can uh focus on is having just one lor a red flag yes absolutely if you are applying with only one lor i think it is definitely a red flag okay yeah. all right uh, let me take a couple of more questions and then um, you know if you have more questions you can email us or my team can reach out uh, but let me just uh, uh, read uh, quickly um uh, any other outstanding question sky or a medical assistant job i think medical assistant job is always better uh, since that is more clinical uh what else let me take one can i match with a score of 231 into internal medicine uh there what it is let's see uh 231 into internal medicine pending research articles that are yet to be published so 231 by itself doesn't tell me much yes the score is kind of average maybe slightly below average pending research again i don't know was you doing full time research what are your scores other ck score year of graduation uh, on the basis of step 1 alone hard to say uh ck is 228 yog 2012 home country in internal medicine uh you can match but with tele rotations is going to be very hard just by itself uh what else let me see should we work during the interview season absolutely doing something in the interview season always helps uh, it's always a good idea uh, for you to uh Uh, start working in the interview season that helps you answer the question what have you been doing currently so uh, that's that and for those of you who are interested in our interview preparation etc uh, take a look at uh, you know our website right here i'm going to type it and you can take a look and and see if um, you know that's something you are interested in there are a lot of blogs uh, that are there on this website as well with that uh, you know hopefully uh, i was able to answer your questions and uh, hopefully it helps you during the season uh, don't panic too much it's early days there are a lot of uh, uh, time there are a lot of things you can do and uh, we'll uh, talk to you later okay good luck and uh, we'll talk in a subsequent webinar very soon thank you all